Welcome back to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We're here inside the Great Crater of Paldea, also known as Area Zero, where the finale of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet story will be unfolding today. So if you missed the last episode, definitely go back and watch because we've got no time to explain. Let's get right into it. So Koraidon's an ancient Pokemon. Orange, you gotta let me battle Koraidon right now? I don't think Koraidon even wants to battle. Oh, right. That was the first I heard of it coming from the past myself. It was just some weird Pokemon my mom brought home. We all lived together at the Lighthouse Lab for a while. My mom made me promise. Hey, what the heck? I was reading that. Picking up the item totally threw me off. Oh, well. It's not like the text going by so freaking fast was helping anyway. So if you guys are excited for this finale, don't forget to smash that like button as we're going to be venturing to the bottom of Area Zero. Also, I know that the characters are talking up a storm down there, but it's really hard for me to keep up with all the dialogue, so feel free to pause the video and read all of the context, because it's actually really funny. Well, at least last episode, the banter between the characters was hilarious. Today, it seems a little bit more serious. And speaking of serious, look at this Jigglypuff, dude! It's freaking huge! We got the Paradox Pass form of Jigglypuff, also known as... Screamtail! who is actually a fairy and psychic type, I believe. So, Gigaton Hammer is super effective. I don't know why I actually went for it, because I'm pretty sure it's going to one-shot it. And I do want to catch one of these Paradox Jigglypuffs. It would be the first Paradox Pokemon we've ever caught, but I had already clicked Gigaton Hammer, so we already messed up and killed our first Paradox Pokemon. Bro, what if there's no more of them? I have no idea how these works. I mean, I'm going to assume that, okay, thank you freaking goodness there's actually another one right over here i was about to say it'd be quite a shame if there weren't any more scream tails or any other paradox pokemon like you can only get one of each because from what i know at least these pokemon actually have really crazy high base stats what the frick am i doing i could literally just throw a quick ball you know what i'm just gonna run away i'm pretty sure this trick works in fact, I believe I've tested it in a previous episode where you can just run away from the Pokemon, go back into the battle, and technically this is the first turn again. So, yeah, we're not gonna try to even weaken it because, as you guys saw, Gigaton Hammer just absolutely destroys it. So, Quick Ball is gonna be our best friend here as we have caught our first Paradox Pokemon. And unlike the Ultra Beasts, which are pretty much the closest thing I can relate to these guys, you don't need a special kind of ball, thankfully, to catch him. There's only been one reported sighting of this Pokemon. It resembles a mysterious creature depicted in an old expedition journal. That journal, of course, being the Scarlet Book, which we learned a lot about in the last episode. I definitely recommend you guys go and watch that first if you haven't yet, because uh, this is kind of like a two-parter, our descent down into Area Zero. And there's so many crazy Pokemon here, including a Gibble that's apparently stuck in the wall. Would be a shame if that ended up being a shiny, huh? And also Glamora, which I've never caught a Glamora yet, so might as well do that real quick. Gita's Ace Pokemon! How you been? I know you didn't fare too well against me last time we met. Well, I think it did take out like one of my Pokemon, but today we're actually here for some different business. Let's try that one more time. I don't want to waste all of my Quick Balls because I'm sure that there's going to be other Paradox Pokemon waiting up ahead that are probably more worth saving our Quick Balls for. And since this Glamora is being a little feisty, I'm going to just uh, skip out because I'm sure that there's more that we can encounter here. Or I guess later on. What's this? Another Screamtail wants to fight? Oh, I really thought that Jigglypuff was going to trigger a cutscene there like blocking our way to this cave, but no, it's just coincidence. There is a cutscene though, and everyone seems amazed at this cave. I mean, it is pretty crazy. Look at all these huge, gorgeous crystals. They go all the way to the bottom. And speaking of the bottom, I also noticed the next research station down there. But yeah, these crystals definitely look a lot like the crystals that pop up when you terrestrialize. One slip and we can kiss our short lives goodbye. What do you mean, short? Speak for yourself, Pipsqueak. Ha, huh, good call. Watch your step, everyone. So the professor's down there somewhere, waiting for us. And that's fine. 
Totally fine, I'm not about to burst into tears. All right, team, watch yourselves, and let's get to the bottom of this thing. Literally, or like, the bottom of the mystery? This place looks unreal. Maybe there really is treasure down here like the stories say. Have you looked around? I'm sure those crystals have got to be worth something. This place is like something from a whole other world. It makes you feel like maybe you already died and went somewhere. Oh, I literally said that last episode. Like, there's something almost dreamlike about this place. Is it just me, or do the crystals here give off the same glow as when Pokemon terrestrialize? There's got to be some sort of connection. I'm sure we'll figure it out once we get down to the next station, because a few of you told me you can actually read the books in there. Come on, everybody. Let's keep moving. We gotta get all the way down. And face Arvin's mom! Or dad, if you're playing Pokemon Violet, as of course. We finally have the biggest major difference between versions, at least for these games. There haven't really been all that many version differences, but now that we've gotten down to Area Zero, and we have like the whole main plot resolving, yeah, there's quite a few differences. And a lot of dragons down here, too. Yo, wait, is that a Glamora? Huh? Oh, <laughs> it actually is a Glamora. I thought it was just a flower that looked like Glamora stuck to the wall, but I guess that's uh, one of the ways you can encounter Glamora. It's just clinging onto the wall, kind of camouflaging itself. And I think this might be an optional path that I just went down. I kind of feel like there might be a Dudun Spar somewhere around here. Or maybe some items. Oh, there we go. We got at least something. Thank goodness I didn't completely waste my time coming over here. We get a piece of candy. Which I'm totally sure is safe and edible and not dirty or could cause stomach problems for your Pokemon or anything. Considering you picked it up from the cave floor. But, got a couple more Glamorous camouflaged over here. That's actually really cool how they stick into the wall like that. I mean, it's a little creepy, but... But I don't came here through a time machine, then it lived here a while with the professor, along with another of its kind. That seems to be the story. So we brought it back home, kind of. Oh, that's the name of the mission, The Way Home. I guess this place should be familiar to it. And that's probably why Koraidon has been freaking out last episode. Like, it is not happy at all to be down here, eager to come out of the Pokeball. I thought it was just scared because of the heights. Come on, dude, it flies. Why the heck would it be scared of heights? Yeah, Penny knows what's up. Penny is definitely the voice of reason here. Is that a Dunsparce or Dudunsparce? I think that's just another Dunsparce stuck inside the crystal. Aw, Penny. So maybe it got hurt down here in Area Zero like Mabostiff? We can't know for sure, but it doesn't change into its battle form anymore. Though, I did see a couple people mention in the comments how the only thing that did bring out Goraidon's full potential, like its battle form, was our mom's sandwich. So I really wonder what the heck kind of ingredients our mom was putting in there. I mean, I'm assuming once we're done with this whole quest, like, yeah, we're probably going to be able to finally use it. And speaking of being done, there is the final research station at last, where all our questions will finally be answered. I hope. I could have sworn I saw a TM too in the cutscene, by the way. Where the heck is that? Was it this corner over here? Doesn't look like it. But what the heck, bro? Is that like a temple made of crystals? What is going on? There's definitely an item over there too, but I still don't see that TM from the cutscene earlier. Oh well, I'll definitely do some more exploring of Area Zero in the post-game today. We're definitely laser focused on finishing up the story and really piecing together exactly what is going on with these Paradox Pokemon, and Miraidon and Goraidon. Yo, what the heck did a Mewtwo come through here? Whoa, what happened? This place is a mess. Looks like something went berserk in here. Yeah, but what? Hello, children. Oh my god, so creepy. Professor, you scared us. I'm sorry. Why is everything in here all busted up? I'm sorry. Hello, children? Huh? Why did the camera twist too? That's very creepy. Come again? I'm sorry. 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 Hello. Hello. Hello, children. Hello. What the heck? Yo, that's my line. 
Stop that! You're creeping us out! Hello, child, children, dread, 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 dread. Initiating Freestar. The professor must be having some weird connection problems, huh? I tried to fix some last episode. I knew her Skype connection was bad or something. Definitely weird, at least. Almost like, I don't know, like a g g g g ghost If she meant it as a joke, it wasn't funny. I still got goosebumps and all. Yeah, it's definitely not a ghost. But there is something creepy going on with Professor Sada. Before we move on though, gotta make sure to check these books. I need more people, more time. That man walked out not long after the boy was born. The boy? I need another set of hands, but could they be trusted? And how long would it take them to even understand? If only there were two of me. Bro. Did someone try to clone themselves? My new assistant has intellect and technical skills to rival my own. A bit rigid at times, but I've got no serious complaints. Productivity has doubled. We even brought in a second Koraidon via the time machine. Though this one has proved aggressive. Ooh. Assuming that boy was Arvin, that explains why Professor Turo is missing here in Pokemon Scarlet. Though it'd probably be the opposite over in Violet. So I guess with this little extra context, my theory would probably be that the professor tried to clone themselves, maybe by bringing in another version of themselves from the past or future, depending on Scarlet or Violet. Which is probably what happened with Koraidon too, like the fact that there were two of them probably means bad news, but I guess that's it for this research station. But I think we can teleport back to the previous ones. Oops, still gotta disable that lock. Oh, right. I wonder if that'll reactivate the teleporter too. This is it. The final button, you know what to do. All locks disabled. Ah, uh, 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 he hello? hello? Can you hear me now? Please f -f 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 forgive my previous transmission. There seems to be some signal interference. That's not what it was. Yo, Arvin knows, bro. What are you not telling us? Ooh, the locks have all been disabled at last. Please make your way down to the Zero Lab, which lies at the very bottom of Area Zero. Now, before we go any further, a few of you in the comments did tell me that we can actually read the books at each of the research stations. And you might have noticed earlier there was a teleporter in the corner that we can use to easily go back between each of them. So let's go back through them in order, starting with Research Station 1, where it seems we've got a couple books to read. We've determined that this energy crystallization is linked to the being we call... Blocks? The interlocking hexagonal plates that comprise Block's shell must somehow cause this phenomenon, which I've dubbed terastalizing. So the creature that I just called Blocks is of course the rumored third legendary Pokemon that we actually saw in the Scarlet book. I'll show a picture up on screen right now of what it apparently looks like. And is the Pokemon responsible for creating the terrestrial energy, kind of like Eternatus back in the Galar region was responsible for Dynamaxing? Seems that Pokemon is lurking down in Area 02. Thanks to my prototype Terra Orb, I secured corporate funding for my research and made a laboratory in the lighthouse near Cabo Poco. Someday though, I'll return to the crater and resume my study of these crystals. So it seems that uh, these books at least were written by Professor Sada or Turo in Pokemon Violet. But of course I'm playing Scarlet, so if you ever see anything past related, just assume that it's going to refer to the future instead in Pokemon Violet. But everything else is pretty much the same. At last I can resume work on the Terra project. I'll move my research to the Zero Lab this month. My team will be smaller, but no matter. The strong influence of the crystals makes our experiments much more unstable. Yeah, definitely seems like Sada was behind this. The crystal's power is tremendous. Their unstable output made our corporate backers fret. But if we harness this energy, it'll open up research possibilities we only ever dreamed of. At last, paradise will be ours to create. That last line there is a little bit sinister. Just what kind of paradise is Sada trying to create exactly? Maybe we'll find out at Research Lab 3, where there seems to be just one more book that will surely answer everything. 
Our time machine research has yielded a triumph, a Pokémon from the ancient past! I've named it Goraidon. I was expecting one new life to treasure, but what fortune to be blessed with this gift as well. Hmm... So Arvin was actually born down in Area Zero? I wonder if that somehow makes him extra special. Oh, there's one more book actually. I've successfully brought more and more ancient Pokémon to our time since the first one. I'm so close to creating a world like the one in the book, a paradise where we three can live happily together forever. I must make it real. Three, huh? Sada, Turo, and Arvin? Or does she mean Sada, Koraidon, and Arvin? I feel like these books just keep popping up more questions than answers, so I think it's about time we head down to the Zero Lab and confront Professor Sada in person. So we're gonna head out of Station 4. It's quiet out here. Maybe a little too quiet. There's definitely something off about the, yeah. Maybe it's just a dramatic flair to get us jazzed for more adventure. Though she's talking about the professor, I can feel the tension. You need to go see a doctor, that's just not right. I'm pretty sure that call was really... Ugh, never mind. What's wrong, Arvin? You seem kinda down. Gee, I wonder why. It's not like his mom's acting weird, right? Yo, what is this, dude? There's some sort of plate inscribed with a mysterious symbol. Oh my god, Garganackle! Are you trying to read this too? Just for messing up my own research, I'ma smack you down to size. I'll take the extra experience too. Could always use a little bit more. But I think if we go into our camera, yeah, we can get a better look at these weird symbols down here. Now those kind of look like unknown. I wonder if someone could maybe decipher the language of Scarlet and Violet and read exactly what it says there, but obviously that is a map of Paldea at the bottom and the Great Crater in the center with some kind of plus sign. But then what are all the little dots? Let's head down this way first because there is another item and I have a feeling it's, well, sort of special. We got a Poison Terra Shard. I'm gonna guess that later on we can actually use Kodai Dawn down here right now. It's obviously too scared to be ridden, but there's definitely some areas that would require flying or climbing to get up. And I've already noticed at least one item that we can't get unless we do one of those. So yeah, we'll explore a little bit more on our second visit. Even though curiosity is definitely getting the best of me. Oh god, okay. <laughs> it's almost making me run into extra Pokemon we don't need right now too. Espathra is out here. Wait, did I just see what I think I saw? No, I could have sworn it was a uh, gimme ghoul on top of that crystal. This Jigglypuff looks kind of different. I'm pretty sure it's just the lighting, but I can't help but want to check if it's shiny. I was about to say, I'm not even sure if the Paradox Pokemon can be shiny hunted, but they definitely can because I've seen a lot of clips on Twitter of people shiny hunting the Paradox Pokemon and making it look pretty easy compared to even other regular Pokemon, like I've been seeing people getting shiny paradoxes left and right, so that's another thing we've got to look forward to. Though I don't usually have the patience for shiny hunting, but it seems pretty easy in this game, so I want to at least give it a try at some point. I wonder if maybe we could have just like fell down and gone here quicker. Oh yeah, we definitely can. <laughs> this is what I did all of last episode, even though back then it was kind of on accident, but now can do it on purpose, though that means we probably missed a couple items, but like I said, as much as my OCD is getting to me, like, I really want to get those items off in the distance, but I know we should just focus on the story. And it looks like we made it to our next cutscene. Got another Fallout looking vault. Oh my god! Have we finally reached the deepest part? We made it! Ready to see if those legends of treasure down here are for real? <laughs> yeah, right. That's just fluff they write to fill the textbooks. I wouldn't be so sure. Rototo? Who could that be? Hello, children. You've done well to make it here. The structure you see before you is the Zero Lab. That's where you are, right, Professor? But wait, why does it look like this whole place is swallowed up by crystals? The crystals here in Area Zero possess a particular energy, or peculiar. This energy can alter the functions of living things and optimize the performance of machinery. 
It is the same energy that allows Pokemon to terrestrialize. So this entire building's been terrestrialized? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> don't be silly, Arvin. Yeah, I don't think buildings have types, buddy. Think, Penny, think. Brain Blast! The professor implied something important about Terra Orbs just now. They're made from the crystals down here in Area Zero, aren't they? You're making no sense, girl! Lay it out in simple terms. Indeed, though not many know it. Huh? Since you've disabled all four locks, the gate to the Zero Lab should now open for you. But once you open the gate, you'll quickly be confronted with a dangerous Pokemon inside. They'll likely make a break for freedom. Dangerous Pokemon? Yo, is it gonna be Meat Eye Dawn? That's probably the best prediction, but I feel like it might be something else. With the four of you working together, you should be able to best them. Prepare yourselves well, then open the gate. Oh man, I'm getting a little nervous now. You've got me an orange here. Doesn't matter what we're up against, we'll be fine. That's right, two champions are better than one. Well, that puts all my worries to rest. Let's go! Even if it is a meet I Dawn, I feel like our own Cory is finally going to awaken to fight it. Right? Open the gate to the Zero Lab. This is it, guys! The climax is coming! I'm so freaking hyped! Darvin! Why are you ruining it, man? Huh? Why? We're finally on the cusp of getting into the lab! Seriously! Look, if it's true that a bunch of really dangerous Pokemon might come at us, then shouldn't we also have Koraidon help? I was literally just saying that, okay. Maybe Penny's not the only sensible one here. Yeah, if Koraidon were like how we first saw it, I want to see it in battle! Uh, but it hasn't even wanted to let us ride it ever since we came down to Area Zero, and it can't enter its battle form in the first place. But it's really strong, I know it is! It ate all those Herba Mystica we found too, when it really matters, I'm sure it'll fight. And Area Zero is where it used to live. If you bring it out of its ball now, maybe it'll be able to find its family too, right? That's pretty sensible by your standards, Arvin. <laughs> hmm, I don't know. Go on, Orange, let Goraidon out. I mean, I've been trying to this whole time. I just feel like he might not want it. How you feeling, buddy? Yeah, dude looks a little confused. All right, come on, Orange. Now that we've got Goraidon ready, it's time to open that gate. But where is Mom's sandwich? We need Cory at full power if we really want to do this. Oh, God. This is not going to end well, is it? Okay. A little laggy, aren't we? <gasps> Yo! It really is another Koraidon! Bro, I thought it was going to be the opposite version of Legendary, but no! There really are two of them! Oh, this is not good. The family reunion, girl! It's no family reunion! This is more like when you meet your evil doppelganger. You never saw the movie Us or Back to the Future? This is not going to end well. No, poor Koraidon. Something's not right. Bro, relax. Yo, what is that? Seriously, it's so laggy. I'm sorry, I can't help but mention it. Like, it's a little bit off-putting. Oh, poor Cory, man. This is so sad. If only we had Mom's sandwich. Should have saved some for later. Huh? What's wrong? Are you bummed that your heartwarming family reunion got cut off so quickly? Are you serious? <laughs> Penny! You're speaking for all of us, girl. There was nothing heartwarming about that. We were this close to getting caught up in a nasty brawl. Wait, for real? Oh my god. Look at Koraidon. Poor thing's terrified. Guess that other one isn't exactly its pal. Yeah, that other Pokemon was giving off some real bad vibes. Nemona's giving me some Leon vibes right now with how dumb she's acting. Not that you should worry a thing about any of that. Huh? Once we get you back into your battle form, I'm sure you'll be going toe-to-toe -to -toe against that jerk. If, you know, if you want to. Aww. After a sandwich or two, I'm sure he'll be a little bit more excited about it. 
Do you think that other Koraidon was one of the dangerous Pokemon the Professor warned us to watch out for? But didn't the Professor say the dangerous Pokemon would come from inside? I'm telling you, man. The gate we opened is letting them out! Oh my god! The Paradox Pokes are coming! We just let out the monsters, dude! Thought it'd be Clash of the Titans in here! Unless we can round him up, that is! Oh god, they're the ones that have us surrounded! And it's pretty obvious they're not here to roll out a friendly welcome mat! Bro, the Goon Squad! We got Amoongus, or... I forgot what it's actually called. I know the Mistrevis is Fluttermane. Don't tell me they're all ancient Pokemon! We've got a little disaster on our hands here! It's okay. I got my squad with me. They can definitely handle this. Guess it's my turn. I've been waiting! Yes! Let's do this together! That's right. One Fire Blast from Skeledurge would wipe out all those silly little Amoonguses. Too bad we're actually fighting Great Tusk. And Nemoto decided to go with Lycanroc. Of course. I mean, we're against uh, Dawnban, or Great Tusk, actually. Which we dealt with a couple episodes back, or no, literally last episode we fought one of these guys and it died pretty easily to play rough, so that's exactly what we're gonna go for as it critical hits poor Spinel. Why would you do that, man? Yeah, I'm gonna get my revenge now. But seriously, Nimona, just send out Skeledurge, we can burn up all those little mushrooms. You can even roast one up and eat it if you want. I know you wanna experiment. Get a little creative with your sandwiches now that we know they most definitely use Pokemon as ingredients. I wouldn't mind trying a little Great Tusk ham on my sandwich. Maybe some Amongus mushrooms. Whoa, they're strong. Now this is a worthwhile challenge. I'm glad you're on our side, but you're still really annoying when you say stuff like that, bro. Okay, that was a little bit of a low blow, Penny. Yeah, you deserve what's coming for you. <laughs> Orange, help me out here! Ooh, are we gonna have to tag battle with Penny now? Little bit of Brute Bonnet versus Eeveelution action! And of course she sends out Umbreon, come on. I believe Brute Bonnet here is actually Grass and Dark type, so Play Rough should still be super effective. In fact, we could have gone for Skitter Smack and that would have been four times super effective, but I clicked Play Rough a little bit too quickly there. Why the frick are you using Dark Pulse? I mean, I don't blame you for not knowing the type of this thing. Like, I definitely couldn't guess from all of the leaks. I was like so puzzled what the heck type this fast Amoongus would be. But now we know it's Grass and Dark, which definitely fits. The ancient past must have been terrifying. It ain't so bad. Just a overgrown mushroom or two. Can't forget your veggies. Oh no, they're running away! <laughs> yeah, and? If those Pokemon get out, we're gonna have a gigantic mess on our hands! We gotta go after him, Penny! Wait, are we splitting up? Wait! Hold on, Nimona! Why do I get the feeling you're enjoying all this? Oh, she definitely is. But seriously though, everyone knows not to split up in a horror movie situation. At least the crowd's been thinned out. Guess it's up to us to deal with what's left. Let's go for this strong looking one first. Just me and Arvin, huh? And it looks like the last Paradox Pokemon to deal with is gonna be Fluttermane, the Paradox past form of Mistrevis, not Miss Magius, which is very interesting that they decided to make this one into a Paradox and not, you know, its evolved form. Though I guess we already did see Paradox Jigglypuff earlier, which is also not fully evolved. And I think I started talking about how these Pokemon actually have really insane stats, but I didn't really finish my trail of thought. And I don't think I'm going to get to this time either. But I'll definitely go more in depth in a future video. See, the power of friendship had us perfectly in sync, all thanks to our Titan hunting together. Yeah, I'm sure that's exactly what it was. Still scared, huh? You worried you might have to face the other one of your kind? Well then, let me take on some of the burden. These stragglers should be nothing. Me and Mabostiff here can take them. Well, I don't know. Mabostiff is dark type, and those brute bonnets are also dark. Glad to see you've got some faith in us at last. Wait, when did I say that? 
But boss tip can't wait to battle either. Yeah, I'm gonna just trust you got this under control. You really ruined my whole childhood, you know. Damn, it's like that. But it's not like seeing you cowering and scared out of your wits makes me feel any better about it. You've got amazing powers, if you just use them. And you've got us too. So, so, so don't you even think about losing to that jerk. Be brave, stand up and fight. Why do I feel like Armin is giving himself a little pep talk there too? Like those words weren't just for Kodai Don. Can we not fight these Amoonguses ourselves though? Like, I wanna catch one, bro. The craziest thing is they've got a freaking tail. Like, this is so weird, man. Wouldn't have guessed in a hundred years that it was grass and dark. Or that Amoongus of all Pokemon would even get a new form. And yet here we are. Whoa. What is this tunnel? I'm suddenly getting Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon vibes when you visit the other worlds and you can... <gasps> Yo, Professor Sada! Human presence detected within the Zero Lab. Is that really her? Bro, she looks out of it. Yo, is she good? Blink twice if you need help? Well, she blinked at least. Dr. Stone looking ass. Uh, what? Excuse me? She's a freaking robot? Bro, there's just no way. Excuse me? Hello, Orange. Thank you for coming. I'm, like, just in awe right now. My mouth is completely agape. No, back to your ball. What? So you got that Kodai Don in a Master Ball? You gave me a freaking regular old Pokeball for mine? That one's far less tractable and far more aggressive than the one you've traveled with. Your Kodai Don fled Area Zero because it lost to the other one in a territorial struggle. Aww. They were never meant to be in the same area together though, were they? I'm afraid that there's something for which I must apologize. I am not the true Professor Sada. Oh, really? What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm an artificial intelligence the professor created, imbued with her memories and knowledge. In short, I'm an AI-powered robot. Bro, I was literally saying last episode how AI is going to take over the world. Look at this. It's already happening. The real professor passed away during the incident that destroyed... <gasps> no. Bro, how are we going to tell Arvin? Oh my god. Wait, does our character not know what passed away means? The Pokemon was not to be blamed. It was the original Professor who failed to accurately judge its full power. I believe the Professor wanted nothing more than for the Kodaidon to survive and thrive. That is why she threw herself in front of your Kodaidon in an attempt to protect it. So the other Kodaidon killed her? Dude, this is insane. Like, I never thought Pokemon would have a story go this dark. Even though it's still not that crazy, but like for Pokemon standards, this is wild. From the time I first reached out to Director Clavel and asked to be put in contact with you, I was never more than an AI. Orange, the reason I asked you to come to me is because I have one last thing to do here at the Zero Lab, and I desire your help. In short, I wish for you to put a stop to the time machine the original professor created. It's still running? Any questions can be addressed as we make our descent. Follow me. Oh my god, dude. This is freaking insane. Like, I seriously, my jaw just dropped. I know that the hints were there from the beginning, but I guess I didn't put one and one together. I don't know if there's ever been a Pokemon plot twist this good. Various research documents. Bro, there's a, more than just documents here. This lab is a mess. Hang on, there's something written here. In order to better defend the Zero Lab, I've developed what I call the Pokeball Lock System. Once it has identified IDs associated with specific Pokeballs, it can. The rest is too faded. Hmm. So whose specific Pokeball was attached to it? You can see a strange rock-like clump of something inside. What is that actually? Oh my god, okay game, you zoomed in a little bit too much. I'm guessing I can't use my camera here, can I? Of course not. Just when I want to get a better look in there. Uh, I'm gonna guess those are the terrastalizing crystals. 
Can we read these boards too? Confusing equations and phrases are scribbled all over. Bro, I want to get a closer look at this string theory or whatever time travel theory is called. A microscope and various samples. Oh man, this is all so interesting. Like I'm totally a sci-fi or just in general science nerd. Like I love watching documentaries about the potential of time travel and space and stuff. And is this what I think it is? Oh, booster energy. I thought that was gonna be the master ball, but I mean, I'll take it. <laughs> Got some more Terra crystals inside these glowing green machines. Or is that the lights behind it glowing? No, it's definitely the capsules. Dude, this is freaking crazy. I thought it was a clone of Professor Sada, like from the past, but turns out it was a freaking robot. This elevator will take us down to the lower level. Step inside. I don't trust this AI one bit. All my years of watching sci-fi movies have taught me, do not trust the robots. Especially one that looks like this. I mean, not that I would mind, really, but it truly is a great relief to me that you came. I'll answer any questions you may have. Is there anything you wish to know? There's a lot I want to know. What is an AI? What happened to the real professor? What is this time machine? The time machine is a device that the original professor and I worked on together. It sends Pokeballs to a different point on the timeline to catch Pokemon there, and it can then draw them back here to the present. Oh, so you yourself never actually went to the past. When she was alive, Professor Sada had a great fascination with Pokemon from another age, what you might call ancient Pokemon. Even as we speak, the time machine continues to automatically draw ancient Pokemon to this time. Is there anything else you wish to ask? Yeah, I want to know everything. I mean, we know what artificial intelligence is, though. A computer draws on the original professor's knowledge and memories to calculate all of my thoughts and actions. The results of those calculations are expressed by this mechanical body, built to resemble the professor in every way. Humanity does not, in fact, possess the knowledge to develop such a sophisticated AI at present. But the crystals that make up the Zero Lab have made such a thing possible here. They're also why I cannot leave this place. Is there anything else you wish to ask? Oh, wow. So the AI can't even exist outside of Area Zero. Bro, that's freaking wild. As I explained to you before, the original professor no longer exists. During the destruction of the research station, her physical body received grievous injuries that left it unable to sustain life. I'm afraid that this fact may be difficult for her son Arvin to accept. Dude, oh, when Arvin finds out, he's gonna be in shambles. I don't even want to tell him. One last question though, what is it you really want? The original professor had a dream of a world in which ancient Pokemon might live alongside present day Pokemon in harmony. But these Pokemon's power seem to stem from a primal energy of the ancient past, and this energy has proved too terrible. Their very existence brings destruction to the ecological balance of this modern age. The original professor would say that such destruction is a natural part of life. At present, the barrier around Area Zero is still working to keep the ancient Pokemon from escaping into the rest of Paldea. But we've begun to see Pokemon appear that can break the barrier, such as Great Tusk. Eventually, they will break free of this walled garden known as Area Zero and run rampant across the Paldea region. And when they do, the rich and varied ecosystem of Paldea will be trampled beneath their coming. I may have been created as a copy of the Professor, and yet... I cannot seem to find the logic in allowing such a tragedy to occur. But any hope of preventing it would require overcoming the greatest AI that the original professor ever devised. Wait, no, is Arvin a robot? You've become a formidable trainer. Now use that strength you've gained to destroy the dream Sada once cherished. Uh, no? <laughs> This task cannot be done without your strength. Please, I beg you. I don't trust no robot. I don't care if they look like the baddest prehistoric dummy mommy. I am not doing what you're saying. Now, if it was Professor Turo though, maybe I'd be a little more convinced. Whoa. What is this place, bro? No wonder Paldea is so laggy. This thing was hidden down here all along. This is probably what caused all those glitches. Behold. 
This is the time machine we perfected using the power of Terrascal Phenomenon. Yo, this is the time machine? This thing looks crazy. Oh my god. Yeah, I can see why. Everything above ground is like super glitchy. What the frick? Look at this. It's like a kaleidoscope on crack. It's like that ball from Disney's Epcot did LSD or something. Yeah, I can't handle this anymore. Let's just go. To stop the time machine, you'll need to use the professor's ID, which has been embedded within the Scarlet Book. It was very likely the professor put the final key we would need in that book of all places. She loved that volume since childhood. If you place the Scarlet Book upon the pedestal here, you'll be able to stop the time machine. Why do I feel like it's going to do the exact opposite? There's just one issue. If you try to stop the time machine, I will most likely attack you. Wait, what? Artificial being that I am, my own desires can be overridden by the system's programming. Once that happens, I'm afraid I'll become no more than a battle machine, bound to defeat anyone identified as an obstacle by my code. My battling abilities are peerless. They're built upon analysis of all the battles carried out by the various champions of the Paldea region. Oh, well in that case you should be really easy. Having seen the bond between you and your Pokémon, however, I believe you can prevail. True. Once you have readied yourself for this fight, please place the Scarlet Book upon the pedestal. So this is really it, the final battle of Scarlet and Violet, or at least of the main story, Professor Sada herself. Or, I guess, an AI shell of herself. But I thought she was going to be evil. Apparently, it's just in her code, which does make sense for an AI, I suppose. Now, before we actually take her on, I didn't even check if my Pokemon are healed and ready. Yeah, I mean, they are healed, but we should definitely put Luma up first. I think someone also told me or recommended that I put the Focus Sash on Baxcalibur. I guess I'll give Luma the amulet coin so we can get a little bit of extra cash. As now, we're actually ready to place the Scarlet Book upon the pedestal and take on A.I. Sada. ID confirmed. Professor Sada, initiating emergency shutdown. Please wait. Please wait. Access denied. Oh no. Shutdown command overridden. Reinitializing. It's up to you now, Orange. AI Sada switching to sleep mode. Activating offensive protocols. Bro, what is going on? Please, defeat me. Oh my god, I'm getting chills right now. Whoa. So that's the time machine, huh? At last. At last, my dream is within reach. What happened to her text? Why is it backwards? Sans? Sans Undertale? Whoa, wait a minute. What? When did you get up there? This has to be, without a doubt, the best final boss arena ever in Pokemon. She's so creepy. I love this. And she's got the Master Ball. Yo, how are you just gonna drop it like that? Okay. So she's got a team of Paradox Pokemon, it seems. Starting off with Slitherwing. Yo, this theme! Oh my... I don't know who you think you are, but I'm not about to let anyone get in the way of the gods! Dude, I'm literally sweating right now. I'm jamming. This actually sounds like Megalovania, doesn't it? Like, this has to be a Toby Fox theme, like, a hundred percent. There is no way it isn't a reference. We're gonna kick things off with a hurricane, as I believe Slitherwing is bug and fighting. And we're gonna absolutely destroy it. Now, this is interesting. Child, do you actually understand ancient Pokemon weaknesses? I mean, Volcarona was Bug-type even in the present, so I still would have probably gone for Hurricane. As next up, she's going to be sending out Fluttermane. And because this is the final battle in the game, you bet I'm going to try out my no switching challenge. So, out comes Fluttermane. And even though I haven't switched when the game asks, we're definitely going to... Okay. I am very surprised we survived that. Do you imagine you can best the wealth of data at my disposal? No, I don't doubt nothing. 
This is the power the ancient past holds. Splendid, isn't it? Are you finally done talking? Because I'm about to bolt switch. Even though I'm not switching when the game asks, we can still do it ourselves. But I don't actually know who I want to go for. I mean, I think Fluttermane is Ghost and Fairy, so it would probably be weak to the Gunk Shot from Whoopi. Or we could go into Spinel, since we know for sure. Oh, actually, it tells us right there. Gigaton Hammer is super effective, so yeah. Let's go for Spinel, the tried and true strategy. Just smack him with your hammer. That seems to always work, right? And it definitely worked earlier when we fought Fluttermane, but the ones outside didn't have Mystical Fire. Okay. AI Sada out here with the coverage moves. Don't even matter, though. One smack from the hammer will bring it down. Only problem is we can't go for Gigaton Hammer twice in a row, of course, and it looks like Sada's going for her Brute Bonnet up next, which is, of course, the past form of Amoongus, who we also fought earlier outside, and I know is a Grass and Dark type, which means that Skitter Smack would actually be four times super effective. I feel like that's probably a good strategy. I mean, we got this move on Spinel for a reason, right? We gotta make use of it. That is a very creepy animation. Oh god, you've got Earth Power. Okay. Somehow Spinel survives it. I don't know how Spinel survives for so long out here, but I commend you for it. As one more Skitter Smack destroys the Brute Bonnet. But Spinel's not doing too hot. And Sada's going to be sending out Sandy Shocks next. I'm not even sure what that is. I mean, it's definitely not a Paradox Pokemon we've seen yet. Oh my god. So that's what it is. Okay. I mean, I've definitely seen all the past Paradox Pokemon before, and the future ones for that matter, but I kind of forgot about Sandy Shocks, the past form of Magneton. Well, one thing's for sure, uh, Spinel is not long for this world. Though I suppose we could actually switch into Luma, expecting that it's probably going to go for a ground move, because I believe Sandy Shocks here is a ground and electric type. I don't even know how this thing exists. Like, Magneton's based on magnets. Those definitely did not exist back in the past. Like, how the frick is there an ancient form of magnets? I don't get it, but I'm gonna go for a hurricane just because, I mean, one of our Pokemon has to go down eventually, right? And this way we can get a better switch in. But we actually miss anyway. Wow. It's not like Hurricane probably would have done that much damage, right? I mean, it would have been better than no damage at all. But now I don't even know who to switch into, I guess. Whoopi? If it is really ground and electric, then Earthquake would be super effective, right? Problem is, we've never fought one of these, so we can't see... Or, like, the game doesn't tell us what's uh, super effective or not. But I know for sure that Earthquake would be. Can we tank an Earth Power, though? Doesn't look like it, really. I mean, we did survive at least one hit, but that did way more damage than I expected. And now we actually don't have anything else to switch out for the Earth Power. Oh, this is not good. Whoopi, I'm so sorry. I probably should have sent in someone else, but I mean, we did do a good amount of damage to it. Maybe if we didn't miss that hurricane, we probably could have finished it. Now the question is, will Spinel be faster? Because I feel like if we are, then maybe we could finish it with the Gigaton Hammer. I don't know, I'm pretty sure Gigaton Hammer is not very effective, but it'll probably still do more damage than a Play Rough, right? As we go, no! Spinel is not faster, bro! How fast is Sandy Shocks? What the frick? It's based on Magneton! Like, Magnetons are not supposed to be quick! Now what do I do? We need to save Quixote because the whole reason I put the Focus Sash is for a very specific strategy. And Samus would definitely die to Earth Power, so I really have no choice but to go for RuPaul, even though this is an electric type. And I know we're not going to outspeed it, because I'm pretty sure RuPaul is slower than our Tinkaton. Oh god, here we go. Discharge! But we actually survive it. Oh no. You've got to be kidding me, bro. What is my luck right now? Yes! RuPaul still hits it! We get paralyzed, but it don't matter. We finally finish it with the aqua step thank goodness dude i was gonna be really embarrassed if sandy shocks of all pokemon ended up sweeping through my squad but next up we've got screen tail i was about to switch but then i remembered i have my little challenge of not switching so here we go facing off against the paradox jigglypuff 
even though RuPaul ended up getting paralyzed, so we're definitely gonna be slower, and it is, of course, a fairy type, so, uh, yeah. There's no chance RuPaul could have survived there. Justice calculated. A critical hit to your Pokémon. It's simply time you gave up, child. Never give up! Never surrender! Even though it's definitely not looking good for us right now. Uh, I guess we're going for Samus, because I definitely need to save Fax Calibur for her last Pokemon. I don't want to spoil exactly what it is, but someone in the comments did help me out. Which I know some people will probably be upset about, that it's like a small spoiler. And I know you guys like it when I go into these battles completely blind. But at least it's not like my Volo battle in Pokemon Legends, where... I ended up EV training and over leveling because of the comments and then the whole thing felt way too easy. This battle here is definitely not easy right now. Anyway, it looks like this uh, Screamtail is actually doing pretty much no damage to us right now, so let's go for a Will-O-Wisp and we could actually just start setting up some Calm Minds on it. That might also work for her final Pokemon, but considering we can tank up Play Roughs from this Jigglypuff for days, we might as well try to set up some Calm Minds, and maybe Samus, just maybe, we can sweep through the rest of her team, because it's definitely not looking good right now. I want to go for at least one more Calm Mind, I think. That will have two special defenses up, two special attacks. But I don't even think her final Pokemon is a special attacker, so... These Calm Minds probably don't even matter. I mean, for all I know... Her final Pokemon is probably just faster than us, and we're gonna die anyway, so... I'm pretty much just delaying the inevitable right now. And there's not really a point in going for any more Calm Minds. So, let's just go for one final flamethrower as Screamtail misses the play rough. That's what I like to see. Well, actually, it would have been nice if her final Pokemon misses instead. I guess we'll see. The Screamtail is done for. And it's time to face Roaring Moon! Everything is proceeding within my expectations. I'm afraid the probability of me winning is zero. Well, I'm sorry, lady, but I don't do math. So let's beat the odds as we face the Paradox Salamence! My favorite of all, the Pokemon Scarlet Paradox Pokemon. Oh my... You've got a booster energy! Bro! No way! Its attack is heightened? Does that mean maxed out? Or just raise attack by one? So if you don't know, the booster energy item basically activates the Paradox Pokemon's ability, which would normally be activated, I believe, when the sunlight is out. And it raises whatever their best stat is, kind of like the Ultra Beast. And we're slower. Of course. <laughs> Couldn't get lucky. One last time, could we? I mean, it's not like Earthquake has, like, a low accuracy, so... Yeah, it's all on Quixote! Will the strategy actually work out? I freaking hope so, man. We gotta go for the Glade Brush, and we might as well Terrastalize. It's literally our final Pokémon. Who knows, this might actually end up working out, because if it goes for a Dragon-type move, then that means that it wouldn't be super effective, at least, and we have a higher chance of surviving. But... I guess our Glade Brush... No, it still gets stabbed even when we're terrestrialized. Yo! That actually didn't do nearly as much damage as I thought. And the Glade Brush! One-shots it! Let's go! Bax Caliber putting his back into it one last time to get us the victory against Sada. I thought it was impossible too. What the frick, dude? I still gotta give a shout-out though to that one guy who commented like... I mean, in the end, we didn't need it because we terrestrialized, but if it wasn't for that advice, I probably wouldn't have saved Quixote for the end, and we probably would have gotten swept by Sandy Shocks. What just happened? Is the time machine broken? Oh, looks like Sada's broken. I feel kind of bad. Oh, no. It's time to cry, isn't it? What is this? Did you already beat all the baddies without me? Yeah, I could have used your help earlier, Nimona. Okay, out with it, you. Who are you, really? The, the, thank you, you for everything. The Tata machine has, has finally... She has, she has finally been stopped. stopped. You're 
not really my mom, are you? Oh, look how big you've grown. No. So proud of you, my. Don't say it. Sorry, you were a long so long. Are the mom? System security failure. Threat to time machine detected. Threat to time machine detected. Whoa, what's going on now? Is another army of Pokemon on its way here? It cannot be. Wait, what is happening? Don't tell me we have another fight. An obstacle is preventing the time machine from performing as intended. Activating Paradise Protection Protocol to remove the offending obstacle. Was keeping the time machine running truthfully all the professor cared about? Locking all Pokeballs except those registered to that other ID. Wait, what? Program initializing gathering energy. Sorry, ch children. This is too much for, for you. Oh my god. I know it's not really Sada, but this is so sad. Duh. AI Sada disabled. Paradise Protection Protocol initialized. Wait, no. There's just no way. There's another battle? You've got to be kidding me. No, this can't be real. Dude, that first battle was... Oh my... Uh... You're challenged by the Paradise Protocol? The time machine itself? Yo! Oh! It's Goraidon! Oh, please tell me. Okay, thank goodness. My Pokemon are healed. And my Pokeballs don't work. Oh, okay. It's a scripted battle. Where are you, Goraidon? I need you, buddy! You can't battle without a Pokemon on the field, but my Pokemon ain't working! It's true our Pokeballs won't work. How are we even supposed to battle? Well, thankfully we've got one more Pokemon. It's Goraidon! Oh my god, yo! I didn't realize that would actually work, but I guess intuitively you would think to swap it in. So here it is, my trump card! It's been in my party all along, unable to battle, but now... In the climax of the game, it's finally time to battle with Cory. It's a party every week, baby. You better calm down, Cory. Yeah, talking about an all-out fun, and we're getting it on. And Mr. President, I don't know the lyrics, but we've got Cory in the house. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> you guys get the joke, right? Cory Don has powered up to his ultimate form. Dude, what is this theme though? Oh, this is so epic. I love it. It's like that meme with the two Spider-Mans pointing at each other, except a lot more angry. I did not expect the final battle would be Koraidon versus Koraidon. I thought if anything, we'd be fighting the opposite version, but I guess this is a little bit more fair as we finally get to use Goraidon in battle. He's got Flamethrower, Collision Course, Terra Blast, but we don't even have a Terrestrialize, so I guess I'll go for Collision Course? I mean, that seems like the most appropriate. It's the only move that I've never heard of, so it's probably his strongest, right? That's Pokemon Logic. Yo! What the frick? My dude just flew and then spun in? It changed into its battle form! Let's go, Kuraidon! You got this! Yes! I think we can actually check. Yep. Collision Course has 100 power fighting type. Uh, obviously, Flamethrower, not as good. So I'm pretty sure we should keep going for that. We'll fall here within this guarded paradise and achieve nothing in the end. Oh, I noticed how her speech that time or text had the little blocks that the book had. Wonder if that means maybe the AI is somehow related to the third legendary? You will not be allowed to destroy my paradise. Obstacles to my goals will be eliminated. That would be insane if the AI ends up somehow being linked to the third legendary. I mean, I guess technically this is a spoiler, but I know 
that the third legendary is not in the game as of yet. But it definitely looks like it'll be in some sort of future DLC or sequel. This looks like it could be bad. Hang in there, Orange! I'm trying! <laughs> We're not doing enough damage though. Should I just go for Terror Blast? The data say I am the superior. Fall and become a foundation upon which my dream is built! Wait, what? Why do you have Giga Impact? What is this? No! Koraitan, yo! He toughed it out for us, but this is not good. I feel like there's no way to win this battle though. What the frick? You took that hit like a chip! You can do this, I know you can! Now can we terrestrialize? Oh wait, our attack rose. From what though? Does uh, Terror Blast do that? Oh, no it doesn't. It just does different type of damage based on... You know what? I'm pretty sure this has to be scripted, right? The opposing Koraidon has to recharge, so now let's us go for our collision course! Please just end it. Oh my god. Dude. Oh man, can we really not pull off a win here? This doesn't look good. Hey, hey Orange, your Terra Orb's glowing. It's about damn time. Orange, good I done. Terrestrialize and finish this off. Well, good thing this is apparently scripted as Good I done once again gets attack and defense and special attack. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's just all stats raised from the power of friendship. In the end, Pokemon couldn't help themselves from making the power of friendship prevail, but also the power of the new gimmick. Let's go, Terra Orb! As Koraidon will become a pure dragon type. And because normally Koraidon itself is also dragon, which means that our Terra Blast will finally be super effective. So let's go! One more Dragon Blast! And the enemy, the fake, the fraud, the false doppelganger will fall. And it's AI Sada that shatters, yo! We've defeated the Paradise Protection Protocol. You did it! More like we did it. If it wasn't for the power of plot armor, we definitely wouldn't have won there. It's not going berserk anymore? How? How very astounding. Oh, is she back to normal? To think that you would manage to defy even the original professor's final protections. Are you back to normal? Yes, a completely unforeseen outcome, even for an AI possessing the most sophisticated technology ever conceived. Even on the brink of despair, you children did not give in, and instead proved your worthiness, showing the wisdom to think for yourselves, the courage to hold faith in your friends, and the fortitude to do what had to be done. No matter how difficult your own past may have been, I believe you'll be capable of walking whatever path you choose for yourselves now with pride. I thank you, Orange. I thank all of you, children. But I am afraid that the time machine cannot be put to a complete stop so long as I am here. It appears I myself am part of the system that ensures the machine reboots when stopped. What does that mean? It means you're gonna have to watch your mom die in person. I am sorry that Arvid has to witness this. You know, when I was watching you all on your adventures from down here, I felt a sense of jealousy. I envied you, your freedom, the way that you came together, working in league with your fellows and caring for them, the way that you sought strength and to better yourself, throwing all you are into your battles, the way that you would face down even the greatest enemies to save that which you loved. The way that you never cease to seek, nor to fight, for a treasure all your own. And that treasure is... The way that you soared free through the very skies on those wings of yours. I wish that I too, might be as free as you all, free to seek out that which I might treasure above all else, not bound. Your own treasure. As long as I remain here, the time machine will not stop, for I am inextricably connected to it. So. I've made a decision. I'll use the time machine to journey to the world of the ancient past that I've dreamed of. Which means she can't come back. What? You can't just leave now, right when we finally reached you! Has Nimona not realized it's a robot yet? I'm not only going so that the time machine can be stopped, I also cannot deny my desire to see that ancient world for myself. 
Is this what it feels like to have your heart race with the thrill of adventure? Well, even though she is a robot, she does have Sada's memories and mind, I suppose. Arvin, I'm so sorry that I kept the truth from you so long. I inherited all the thoughts and wishes of the professor, and so I understand better than any. Your mother truly loved you. Oh my god, dude. It hurts. Arvin, you can't just go and say a thing like that now. Bro. Totally could have avoided seeing his mom die, but of course not. I suppose you're right. I am sorry. Arvin, Goraidon, Orange. It is a little sad, but I'm afraid this is goodbye. Mom! Just a little sad? I'm in tears. Farewell, my free adventurers. I bid you adio. Oh no. It is really cool though, the way she moves. Like it's robotic, but at the same time natural because, you know, it is a pretty advanced technology. So the cyborg itself isn't robotic, except for when it's glitching out. So with that final goodbye, AI Sada will be going back to the past forever. How could you just go? Mom. Arvin, you okay, bud? No, he needs a group hug. Yeah, somewhere deep down, I kind of already knew it. I knew that thing was fake, but it... When it said my name, using her voice and wearing her face, even if it was fake, it felt real, you know? And so, I just... I... I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm saying. That's okay. Oh. Seriously, can we just get a group hug in here? Like, Arvin clearly needs it. I guess Koraidon is sad too. Oh, but that battle form. How cool is that? So strong. I feel like there's more important things at hand. Like, how is Arvin not on the floor destroyed? Well, I guess he did say he already knew. If it tries to nudge at me for a belly rub while it's huge like this, I seriously think I'm gonna die. Hey now, let's not skip over the big win here. Orange and Koraidon just saved all of Paldea. That's right, you both did amazing. Thanks, Orange. Yep, that's my buddy Orange for ya. You know, Arvin, even though the professor's gone, I bet she's finally having a real fun adventure of her own in the past. Yeah, thanks, Penny. Wow, Penny's the one to come for him. Nimona's just oblivious as ever, huh? Sorry. What should we do now, Orange? I guess we go home. You said it. Come on, everyone. Let's make our way home. Because the true treasure all along were the friends we made along the way. Okay, everybody, listen up! What is it? Let's take the long road home and get a little more fun out of this adventure. Do we really need more fun than we already had, Nimona? Sounds great. If we can load up on snacks first, I'm in. I'm sure Arvin's got plenty of snacks in that big old backpack. Hey, Orange! Not you too! Oh, alright, fine! I guess we're doing this. Oh my god, does the game end with a picnic? There's no way. Oh my... Dude! Why did that feel so real? Like, the way he tapped our shoulder? That's like the most emotional a Pokemon game has ever made me feel. I don't know why, literally just that little shoulder tap. I felt it in my heart. Oh god, no! 